GitHub Copilot Labs, Windows 11 updates for insiders, and my pick of the week that you don't want to miss, some fun Raspberry Pi projects. All this and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. And um, thank you everyone for tuning in to our first episode a few weeks ago. I hope that everyone in the US had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Now that it is December, it is official ugly sweater season. So of course, I had to uh, oblige by wearing one from my nerd collection. Now, Microsoft has apparently sent some Minesweeper sweaters to the so-called influencers out there, but uh, apparently I don't qualify. Satya, what's up? These sweaters actually were available to purchase, but I wasn't able to get one before they sold out because the bots ruined everything. So if anyone got one in a size small that they would like to sell, hit me up. In the meantime, I will enjoy my Windows XP sweater that you cannot have. All right, enough of all of that. Let's do this thing and get into the news. So our first story, it's not a huge developer story, but it is a big deal in the tech world. Jack Dorsey has flown away from the coop. And that's right, the Twitter co-founder and CEO left his post as CEO earlier this week. And his replacement is Parag Agrawal, who was the previous CTO and has been at the company for like a decade. Now, Jack will continue to be the CEO of Square, which is about to rename itself, and this is not a joke, Block. Godspeed, Jack. Next, as I said, it is now December, which means that it is time for the advent of code. Now, advent of code has been around for a number of years, and I'll just read the description from its creator, Eric Wassel. Advent of Code is an advent calendar of small programming puzzles for a variety of skill sets and skill levels that can be solved in any programming language that you like. And uh, people use these as kind of a speed contest for interview prep, for company training, university coursework, practice problems, or just to challenge one another. And it's a super, super fun activity. You don't need to be a computer science uh, person uh, to be able to solve these problems. You just need to have a level of puzzles and some basic programming knowledge. There are also tons of hints out there if if people want to, you know, if you need some help figuring stuff out. The Advent of Code has been around since 2015 and it's always great. So check it out to see how far you can get. Links are in the show notes in the description down below. Now, speaking of coding puzzles, GitHub Copilot, which is a Visual Studio code extension that's still in private beta, but it uses AI to help you code. It's actually really, really incredible. It has some new features in the nightly version of its VS Code extension dubbed Copilot Labs. Now, the Labs feature is now available as a sidebar in the nightly version, as I mentioned, and that'll be home to some different experiments. So the first application experiment they have is called Explain, and this is very, very cool. You basically select some code, and then you ask GitHub Copilot to explain that code to you in plain language. Now, the team has created a few sample prompts, um, three that explain what a particular block of code does, and another that generates example code for calling a function. And you can also customize the prompt and the stop sequence of a query in order to come up with some new applications that use that codex to interpret code. Now, as I said, GitHub Copilot is still in beta, though you can sign up to be let in. I've got links to the GitHub discussion post um, and the, Go, uh, the Copilot nightly VS Code extension in the show notes and the description down below. Really good stuff. Next up, if you've been curious about how uh, the Windows ML API could be used to create machine learning experiences on Windows, you wanna check out the Windows ML Samples Gallery app, which is available in the Microsoft Store. So the gallery uh, is a Windows 11 package desktop app, and it's built using the Windows app SDK, and parts of the gallery are actually backwards compatible all the way to Windows 8.1. And the initial release contains five interactive samples that showcase the Windows ML uh, and, and what it can do through managed and native scenarios, and more samples are coming soon. And each sample also comes with the corresponding code so you can see how it works. I've got links to a blog post that lays it out and to the app itself in the show notes and the description. Next, there's a really great blog post from my pal, Jeremy Lickness, on the .NET blog all about EF Core 6. Now, EF Core, otherwise known as the Entity Framework Core Team, released EF Core 6.0 in parallel with .NET 6 last month, and it is available as a set of NuGet packages. So EF Core 6.0 is a modern, cloud-native, friendly data access API that supports multiple backends, and it's cross-platform, it runs on mobile devices, it works with data binding in client, WinForms, and WPF apps, out of the box, 
and it can even run inside your browser. So check out Jeremy's blog post in the show notes in the description. I've also got a link to a video of a session that Jeremy had at the .NET Comp that shows off even more stuff. So really, really good stuff. Thanks, Jeremy. Next up, the Uno Platform team has released Uno Platform 4.0. Now, we've talked about the Uno Platform before. It's basically an open source cross-platform UI platform that allows WinUI and UWP-based code to run on iOS, macOS, Linux, Android, and even WebAssembly. So basically, you can build UWP apps on Windows that will also run on other platforms. And the Uno Platform 4.0, it was announced this week, along with a set of components, including a Visual Studio Code extension that also supports code spaces, a toolkit for multi-platform first components, there's a Figma plugin, and some additional extensions too. So I've got links uh, to the blog post highlighting everything new in the show notes in the description down below. If you're looking for a cross-platform framework, you might want to check out Uno because they're doing some really good stuff. Next up, I found this very cool GitHub project on Reddit, I think. It's called WPF UI, and it's described as a simple way to make your application written in WPF keep up with modern design trends. The library changes uh, the base elements like window, page, or button, and it also includes additional controls like navigation, toggle button, or snack bar. And the WinApp SDK, MAUI, and the WinUI 3 will all be bringing more support for existing WPF applications in the future. But but if you've got a WPF app that you'd like to modernize the look and feel of so that it fits in with Windows 11, you might want to check out WPF UI and, and see if that'll work with your project. A link to the GitHub projects uh, is in the show notes in the description down below. Next up, there is a new Windows 11 build for insiders on the dev channel, and this release makes some changes to the start menu based on feedback from the users. The team has been taking in feedback from users a lot, so keep that feedback coming. And there are also some improvements uh, that have been rolled out to everyone's favorite app, Microsoft Paint. So I've got a blog post uh, with more details linked in the show notes in the description. Speaking of Windows 11, I found the most amazing video on YouTube from In Commander that goes through the process of updating a 16-bit Windows 1.0 app for Windows 11. This is basically something from like 36 years ago that is now able to work in Windows 11. It's so cool. Check out the video in the show notes and the description. Next, for Raspberry Pi enthusiasts and the home labbers among us, Jeff Yearling took a look at the upcoming Turing Pi 2, which is a mini ITX board that basically lets you create your own cluster of Raspberry Pi uh, Compute 4 modules to build a supercomputer from tiny computers. So Jeff's blog post and uh, a video that he has are linked in the show notes in the description, but this is the sort of stuff I love. I love it. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So the holiday season is a great time for DIY projects. And as I mentioned in this last story, the Raspberry Pi is a great platform to hack on. So my friend Jason Tate, who is the creator of Chorus FM, which emo teens might remember by its OG name, Absolute Punk, he created a mini computer that could sit on his desk and display what he was currently listening to. And he did this with a Raspberry Pi Zero, a, uh, a square uh, L, uh, LCD screen, and a 3D printed case. And then he lays out all the steps on his blog, but he's also got a GitHub repo, which has the software that he wrote, so it shows what he's playing. And Jason is actually using the venerable Last.fm um, API to get his listening data, which is actually really smart, and it gives him some really cool analytics. So he did all this stuff on a weekend, and I imagine other music nerds could modify the code to fit their own needs. I love projects like this because it really captures the spirit of the reason that you know we all got into computers to begin with. So I've got links to Jason's stuff in the description and the show notes down below. Great stuff. All right, that does it for me. Let me know what types of DIY projects you want to work on this holiday season in the comments down below, or let us know what you thought about any of the other stories. If you liked this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all your nerd needs. See you next time. Thank you.